Hello. I'd just like to go over all the different battery packs out there. There's a lot of discussion about uh, sizes, but people don't go into this specific like watt hours and what milliamp hours really means. But we have Anchor, 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 bunch of generic little deals, and well, actually it's an Anchor and it's their wrap power, which is uh, not mentioned often, surprisingly. But we got two chargers and we got a little waka waka lamp thing. This uh, that's just more of a lantern than anything. But this supports quick charge two. It supports two inputs. So what it effect does is it charges twice as fast as any standard charger like this with just one input. It's also twice as big. Well, almost. Um, so we're charging about the same time, although this one's smaller, so or this one's bigger, so this will probably take longer to charge than this guy. This one's a almost the same size as this, but there's nothing fancy here, so this will take twice as long to charge as that one. So something to keep in mind. And this guy is a 26,800 milliamp hour. However, it takes USB Type C, so it can take much higher wattage than any of these. So although this is the biggest, it should only take about four hours to charge from empty. So what that does is effectively limits your time in towns. And that's kind of what I want. Um, if I'm eating, I like to just plug it in. Maybe two hours, get as much charge out of it as I can. Have something like this, you need eight hours to charge overnight. Eight plus, so that'll take a while. So anyway, I'll show you the different charging speeds using this little guy. It's got a little meter on there that will show you exactly how much current it's going through and how quickly it will charge basically if you do a little math off of it. So we'll go through them one by one. Here is the Anchor 20,000 milliamp hours or 20 amp hours battery with the dual in. I only have one plugged in because I only have one detector so that's all I can get. But with two, we should theoretically get twice as much as this. So we are looking at 10 watts right now, active actual charge rate. And it's rated for 10, so it's pretty accurate. Um, with two, you'll get 20 watts. Now it's the Anchor 13 amp hour battery with the tool two ports out. And it is charging at 11 watts, right now 11 watts which is pretty good, really. Here is the Anchor 20,000 milliamp hour battery charging at 11 and a half, 11 watts. Um, I should say that the lower they are charged, the higher the current. So as it gets more and more full, it slows down a little bit. But that's still pretty good, 11 and a half. I guess I drained this one a little more than I thought. This is the Anchor PowerCore Plus with the Quick Charge 2.0. Quick Charge uses higher voltage, and in this case, I guess the battery is pretty full, so it's putting out less amps, or it's pulling in less amps. This is a Quick Charge 3 charger. So it should be going faster, but right now it's only going about just under 5 watts. And 9 volts. Its maximum is supposed to be 1.5 amps, but obviously it's not getting that. I'm guessing because it's pretty full. I have tried different uh, cables and they all show the same numbers for this unit. Here's the RAV power. It's plugged into a standard quick charge 3 charger but it doesn't take quick charge in so you only get the standard charge speed. About 10 and a half watts. Typical what I would expect. Here's the RAV power battery pack now with a power delivery charger and you will see it's going at 19.2 volts at 1.5 amps. That's basically about 30 watts, which is a little less than three times as fast as the fastest one. So let's do the math. So this is a spreadsheet I whipped up of the battery packs I've been looking at for a long distance hike or any hike really. And the green ones are ones I own. What I did was I put them in storage and I used milliamps per hour and their weights, the green ones I did weigh them myself. And what I did was just determine milliamps per ounce. So which battery packs will give you the most storage per weight? 
And obviously the little ones get the worst <laughs> number because little ones and big ones will have the same amount of circuitry. So the little ones have the worst uh, milliamps per ounce because they all require similar circuitry as far as the charge controllers. But you slap in just more batteries and you just get more density with not extra equipment, really. So the bigger ones, of course, then will have much higher milliamps per ounce. When they say milliamp hours, that really doesn't mean anything until they give you a voltage. And they use 3.7 volts for all of these and you will get watt hours. Now watt hours is important because that's the actual number that tells you how much storage is in advice. And you'll see this guy is at 26.8, has 99.16. I don't know if you don't know or not, but 26.8, that's a weird number, right? But the thing is the FAA had decided that you cannot fly whether carry on or checked in with a battery with more than 100 watt hours. I think I saw somebody comment that they were going to buy a 30 amp hour battery. But if you do that, it's going to be 111 watt hours, which then if you try to fly, they can confiscate that from you. The odds of them knowing exactly, <laughs> I don't know, you're just gambling there. But if they take it away from you, you can't really complain. And then you'll have to get another one. So try to keep it under 26 800. Now, if you take the watt hours, I put in just random features of it. You'll see also that this device is 33.5 and this device is 32. Pretty similar. Yet this 32 has a higher milliamp hour per ounce number than this one. That is because this has power core plus which supports quick charge. I'm not sure if it's in or out. I didn't research it any further after seeing the weight. It wasn't really worth it. But anytime you add quick charge, it does add a little more weight to your devices. That's something to think about. For example, this one is 13.4, a little more storage, but not a lot. This one is 13. And they have almost the same storage. But if you look at the weight, that has quick charge 3 out and has 12.50, whereas this one is 15.38, a lot higher. And if it's quick charge out, unless you have a Qualcomm device that supports quick charge, you're just carrying extra weight for nothing. So you want to be careful what you'll be buying. Um, you don't want to be buying a quick charge out device and carrying extra weight when you'll never use that function. They also cost more. Now, if you go here, I have the actual charge rates of devices that I own. And then I generally put just what the descriptions of the devices say. So what you do is you just divide watt hours by actual charge and you'll get time to full based on a completely empty device. Now, yeah, there's plus or minuses, so you don't want to take it for exact numbers like this uh, Anchor 20,100 standard with no quick charge or anything will take six and a half theoretically, but generally it'll take like seven, seven and a half. Here's another an example of quick charge, actually not quick charge. This 20,000 dual in has the same storage amount as this standard power core, yet the milliamp hours per ounce is a lot less. I'm guessing because the dual in requires extra circuitry to handle two power ends, but in doing so, they also reduce the charge time to 3.4 hours, which is a lot less than that. So if you're going to go somewhere to eat, and you have this guy, an hour will get about 15%. So if you, <laughs> there's kids screaming outside, but if you get this one and you go somewhere to eat for an hour, it's only, you're only going to get one sixth, one seventh of the charge. Whereas if you get this, you'll get maybe 30% or that 30% of the charge while you're sitting there eating, which is pretty good depending on how much battery usage require but something to think about i think milliamps per ounce is useful if you're wanting to optimize what you have although of course storage is the most important thing really uh, well compared to weight like if you don't need 26.8 i guess you could go with 20. if you have a lot of time and you plan on stopping in a lot of towns and 
staying overnight in a lot of places. I guess you could use this, but for 1.2 ounces more, you can carry something a little heavier, which will drastically reduce your time spent in town. So, something to think about. The other thing also you need to think about is a dual in requires a wall charger with two ports out minimum, whereas that of course will only require one, which will be much lighter. So add a little bit more weight and a USB type C will also add a little bit more. That's really it. Hopefully this cleared up some things, more than likely just complicated things more. So if you have any questions, just feel free to ask and I'll get back to you. I only know the weights in the store, just some device. I would just like to add iPhone users do not have quick charge at all. So don't get any quick charge out devices. You can get quick charge in, but again, you'll also have to get a quick charge wall charger. So that'll be important. One of the main advantages I found with the RAF power model, and I haven't found any anchor models that can do it, but it can charge at the same time as charging something else. So right now it's charging this battery pack at pretty slow, but it's charging it and at the same time it's charging this unit. And the nice thing about this is you can plug it in like this and go to sleep and that'll charge and it'll keep charging that. Once that's full, it'll just divert all the current to this and this will charge. So in the morning, any other devices that you plug in here will all be charged as well as the battery pack. So I think that's pretty cool. I wish Anchor would do that with some of their models. Um, I haven't tested it for sure. I know this one does not but every description says it does not support it. Uh, I guess there's only one way to find out, but I'll try it out. Um, I do like that a lot because you can plug everything in, even if they don't need charging necessarily, and in the morning everything will be topped out. Whereas if you charge something like this, you plug it in, you charge it, but then you'll have to have something with multiple ports, just like this guy, and plug in all your other devices, um, which can, cause problems if you have a lot of things to charge. Right now this is a USB Type-C and then two USB ports. So I could charge like my phone, um, a camera battery, that's about it then. Then if you have like a Fitbit or a 360 camera or maybe a GoPro and a Suunto watch and you're in kind of trouble. So. so with the RAV Power, because you can charge it, at the same time as charge other devices, you can do something silly like this, where you have one power delivery charger here with two USB ports. So I got, uh, I don't know, a bunch of things plugged in. <laughs> Battery pack for the 360 camera, plus my cell phone charging. And then I have my uh, Sony camera, battery charger, and my Zoom took charging off that. So I have four things going. The only alternative to have four things charging at the same time would be to get a charger with more ports. So, but that's pretty cool and you can just leave it like this, run all night and the next morning all your things are charged. So, big bonus. Thank you for watching.